Hi everyone, my name is Petko. I'm more known as Petko Sham or Nerius on Twitch. I am the current rank 1 player, rank 1 elemental shaman since season 2. And this is going to be a complete elemental shaman guide for Mythic Plus and also a bit of a rating. Uh, in this guide, I'm going to include talent choices, when I should switch to Master of the Elements and when I should I switch to Storm Elemental. I'm going to cover all the Azrites for 8.3. Uh, all the essences as well for 8.3 and I'm going to show you my personal current choice and what I should run and what I would run 8.3 as well as trinket wise and also at the end I'm going to include a slight section of um, kind of a beast talents for raiding and also how to obtain the beast as rates pretty much the, the guide the guide is going to target pretty much uh, players from all across skill levels from very new to shaman players to um, Intermediate players to expert players, anybody can get a glimpse of that. Anyway, let's begin. First thing first, let's talk about talents. Now, have you have seen me on Twitch many many uh, months ago that I have switched from Master of the Elements to Storm Elemental. Currently, because Storm Elemental outperforms Master of the Elements in the current tier just because of the scaling. Scaling with Storm Elemental combined with Blood of the Enemy as a major is insanely strong. That it can burst a target really really quickly. I'm gonna show you later on the guide a sample of my video doing a insane amount of AOE burst and then you can just copy what I do to obtain the same burst pretty much the same the, the same talent you want to have a of the elements 100% must uh, it will increase your signal target by a ton aftershock is a must uh, talent followed by oh here you can either choose uh, spirit wolf or static charge this will decrease your uh, duration of a stun uh, it will decrease the cooldown of the, of the stun by 5 seconds which target it stuns up to 4, so you really play around this, you can make uh, instead of a 1 minute stun to 40 seconds uh, video on the stun and Spirit Wolf is extremely useful, you can get it as a, a kind of a defensive ability because it does 5% reduce damage for each second you stay in this Ghost Wolf or you can use it as a movement ability it will stack up to 20% on this role I personally like to play Storm Elemental for most of my keys but sometimes I do play Master of the Elements. Now, when, when I should play Master of the Elements, when should I play Storm Elemental? It's very, very simple. I'm gonna write it for you. So, usually I play Master of the Elements whenever I want to have a bit more single target. Whenever I don't play in an organized group, whenever I pull around three to four mobs consistently, then, then obviously Master of the Elements it will be better. But if I pull consistently four plus mobs, and I know that, for example, the week is fortified where I need more trash damage, then Storm Elemental build is gonna be superior. Now, in my case, I run most of the times my Storm Elemental because I run in a pre made group that I know the pools, I know the mobization, and pretty much I'm familiar with anything they do. Storm Elemental will play, is the play if you're familiar with your group. Moving next, I the Natural Guardian of Ancestral Guidance, doesn't really matter. Ancestral Guidance is extremely useful in a situation where you need a burst healing, for example, the, um, the mobs before Galva, that's the third boss of Tempo, they are very dangerous, you can help the healer with Ancestral Guidance, for example, on Bursting Weeks, Ancestral Guidance is extremely useful, when the market spits in the weakest manner, uh, this can get utilized. Uh, you can also try to run Nature's Guardian for it. For example, if there's any like a one-shot mechanics um, that will prevent that for you from dying. King's Rest uh, is another prime example that you can use Nature's Guardian. First boss has an insanely strong spit. Third boss, Kula the Butcher, has an axe for 20 seconds debuff duration that will tick and eventually this can make or break your survivability. ability. On this row, you always want to run Primal Elementalist as it does increase your um, AoE and in general overall by a ton. It's also very easy to manage. It also gives you a second wall on your Earth Elemental. So many Earth Elemental, you have a second wall called Hardened Skin, which is also like um, you reduce all of your damage taken by 40% for 10 seconds, and it doesn't. And you can use this, and then whenever, uh, whenever this runs out, you can actually use your actual wall Astro Shift. So it's actually two walls, and it's useful. On the top of this, you want to run always Stormkeeper. It is a must talent. Mythic Plus and for raiding as well, as it does empower your chain lighting or, or uh, lighting bolt by a ton, and it makes it overload pretty much all the time. Now for, for, for raiding, there's a two adjustments that I usually do. First of all, I run always Totem Mastery for raiding, um, and instead of the Storm Elemental, I always run Master of the Elements for raiding, and sometimes I switch to Ice Furies. Now when, when should I switch from Ice Fury build to Primal Elementalist build? It's usually if I 
if I know that, for example, it's a pure single target, or like two targets, even like if it's a pure single target, or for example, the ads are coming uh, once in a while, and I need boss damage, and I usually need need to push that uh, single target, and I play I3 build. But if I know that, for example, it's a cleave fight, let's say two, three targets constantly, or there's ads coming every 20 seconds, then Primal Elementalist will probably be slightly better. Now, this is my own experience, and I, I play usually on my feelings. I usually support these feelings with, with some with, with simulation crafts, but today we're, we're talking about Mythic Plus. I just want to briefly mention about my how I usually choose my talents for raiding. Now, more moving forward. Let's talk about what stats should I build for Elemental Shaman in 8.3 in the current tier. I usually like to go for stat priority is gonna be for your critical strike, it's gonna be your, your main or like to go to, you wanna have haste, and then you wanna have versatility. Now, talking about values, there are no perfect value stats, but what works for me is usually around 30-ish percent critical strike. Now, obviously this will bump for the next tier, so this number critical strike is expected to be around 35-ish, maybe 40, depends how the secondary stats will scale. Now haste-wise, I usually like to go between 25 or like 20-ish, let's just say 20 to 25, even to 30 because of the next tier. That's haste percent and then versatility, there is no diminishing return, so therefore the more the better. Obviously, if you run with uh, Conflict and Strife Miner, you can have, let's say, anywhere between 7 to 11 percent, and that's gonna be just fine. Obviously, if you have lower, it's also okay, as long as you hit those numbers. And then if you have higher, that's also okay, as long as you hit the, the, those numbers, the bare minimum for hasting crit. It's gonna be stat priority. Now, speaking about mastery, you have last, last secondary stat. This is a completely dead stat. You should avoid it by any cost. And if you have any piece with mastery, that probably means it's a dead piece. Try to or remove it. That's obviously for mythic plus. For raiding, it's a bit more different. Sometimes mastery items are better because the high item, high item level also can keep that in mind now uh moving to the next section section let's talk about um what essence am i going to play in mythic plus for next year now for next year i will probably not probably like i will for sure play blood enemy on major now why i'm playing blood enemy on major instead of iris is because blood has insane scaling uh when it comes down to like end end gear um and secondary stat scaling because it does empower your not only it does increase your critical strike, but it also empowers your critical strike damage by 25%. Those 25% is actually huge. Now, if you combine those 25% with your passive uh, spell, a spell of the Shaman called Elemental Fury that increases your critical strike damage taken instead of 200 to 250%, it does actually insane burst. If you, see, like, if you have seen my Twitch, uh, Twitch TV slash Nereus X, I usually burst anywhere between 5 to 750k. That's on 8.2.5 current year with the current year 430, 444. And I would assume next year I will be probably able to break 1 million burst. Sure. Now, if you combine the element of Fury plus Blood of the Enemy plus the Torrent passive called Brown, that's extra 2%. Now you can imagine why I burst so much. In the right numbers, hitting the right buttons at the same time, does insane amount of, of burst. And that will, that's only achievable by having blood of the enemy so having blood as a major for keys that are like 15 plus or like 16 plus keys on level is gonna be probably must now if you run lower keys or just like 15s so your regular weekly it wouldn't, really, it wouldn't really matter you can run either iris or you can run blood whatever you prefer like i would still probably rock blood of the enemy moving to the next what's what uh, miners should i should i play um currently i'm playing with the purification protocol miner and then I'm playing with Conflict and Strife Miner. Those are two primary ones that I'm, I'm, I'm rocking until today. But the next year, when they, whenever they add one more slot, I'm gonna play Vision Miner. Now, why Vision Miner is because it does decrease my cooldown of my main ability by was like 20%. Let me just check with it to make, make sure. Um, oh, sorry, 13%, and it also adds a permanent versatility. So that's also a plus. Um, sometimes I choose to run uh, instead of the purification vision for the current tier 8.2.5 because I feel like uh, in, in some situations it's better. Like when I know that my group is gonna pull back to back big packs, then having storm element as soon as possible is probably gonna be the play. Also, if you if your tank kites a lot, that means you cannot get the full value of purification protocol because the mobs has to get stacked so you can proc it to everybody. Then purification protocol. 
uh, might not be the greatest if you're playing pucks like 15s and so on. In general, to summarize, verification protocol, conflict and strife, vicious miner for next year with blood of the enemy major. That's gonna be the best setup. Speaking about Azurites, what Azurites should I focus for next year? How can I get them? Is it the uh, I pretty much have seen and tested so many things on PTR, obviously off stream and some of them on stream. Determine what are going to be the best Azurites and how to, how can I get them. So the two, the two best Azurites coming from the last two bosses. Now that's very important. If you don't raid, it's going to be very hard for you to obtain any anywhere good decent. I would say any decent Azurites is hard for you to obtain because the item level of those two are going to be increased by ten. So for example, as you can see, the normal item level of the First nine bosses is gonna be 475 on Mythic. The last two bosses is gonna be 485. So having those two Azurites is gonna be insane. So obviously the hit is gonna be from the purpose of Enzot. Be the head. He's, it is a perfect hit with natural harmony, ignition potential, overwhelming power, uh, resounding protection. Obviously Azurite empowerment. Now when it comes down to when it comes down to hold on, why did I close it? Um, chest. It's gonna be the best chest from Enzot himself. With Synapse Shock, uh, an Ignitious Potential, Elemental Whirl, um, Long Strider, and obviously Empowerment. Now, when it comes down to Shoulder, there is no beast shoulder from gambling from the Residuum Vendor. So, Residuum Vendor is going to be actually not that useful to you uh, if you look for N tier uh, beast items. So, you can you can probably use the first uh, couple of Residuum that you earn. Uh, for uh, pieces that are probably going to get changed with whenever you whenever you obtain those from heroic or like mythic version so keep that in mind you don't need to save um, residuum for the end to get your this piece your best shoulders are going to be right this one these are only obtainable if you have at least 2100 uh, current rating of for the pvp season 4 if you don't have dualist title that's 2.1k as a rating then you won't be able to get those shoulders these are the big shoulders and you have to get them tectonic thunder ig overwhelming power and vampiric speed that's about it how to get the peace house rights how to obtain them uh, last thing i'm going to talk about before i show you a short video of myself is going to be um our trinkets so what trinkets are going to be the best? Currently I have tested many, many trinkets, but what works for me the best are going to be Manifesto of Madness, which is an insanely good trinket. It gives you crit and verse, which is your one of your main stats. It's also a minute and a half cooldown, which means you can actually actively combine this trinket with Blood of the Enemy, which is obviously huge. Second trinket is going to come from uh, Prophet Skitra. It's going to be Psych Shredderer. It's insanely strong as well. Um, it does add a lot of value when it comes down to overall, and this trinket is around 4% of your overall. I will do some testing on a PTR um, on Twitch slash Nereus X in the upcoming days, and I'm going to show you how much of my overall is uh, this trinket from, and so on. I'm going to test a bit, play around, and then I can update my guide further if this trinket gets nerfed or buffed, because there's uh, still 3 weeks until mythic release. Uh, even four weeks until mythic release, so this can potentially change, and also that the uh, manifest of madness can change if they decide to do so. That's pretty much it for the short guide. Uh, again, I'm sorry for the skiff guide. Um, I have uh, never done a guide on YouTube, so that's going to be my first ever. But keep that in mind. Uh, please don't flame me in the comments. I uh, I will make sure to update, make sure to update those guides quite often. Now, it's time for me to show you a small sample of my, uh, pretty much how to burst, uh, pretty much how to burst as Elemental Shaman. Find it. Right. Now, I'm going to jump to a video and I'm going to show you a small sample of how to burst as Elemental Shaman in AoE situations. And then I'm going to briefly talk about how to single target as well. Now, first thing first, what I like to do is before I start every dungeon, I like to have at least 60 Milestorm here. What does that give me? It's going to give me one free earthquake to put on a pack before I actually press my spells. One free earthquake is actually a huge DPS bump that many of the channels don't do it. Okay, let's just begin. So precast your trinket. Now if you want to learn, if you want to watch any stream and learn how to play the, the class that you watch, you usually watch these box. So, those four lines are going to be kind of a kind of a primary thing you want to watch uh, when, you, when you look at streamers. Those lines are showing you what spells I have pressed after another, so you can actually keep in mind what is my rotation, how I press buttons, and and, and so on. 
Okay. Now, jumping, jumping to the next. So, precast my trinket, obviously. Precast my Stormkeeper. Now, why do I, many people ask me, why do you precast your Stormkeeper all the time? And you wait. So, pretty much, whenever you cast, whenever you precast your Stormkeeper, uh, this Stormkeeper goes on cooldown immediately. So, one Stormkeeper has 60 seconds cooldown, right? So, once it goes on cooldown, um, let's say you shave off 5 seconds of this. Because you have 15 seconds to play around your Stormkeeper right here. You have 15 seconds to play around the Stormkeeper. But you might not use it immediately as long as you precast it. These 60 seconds are going to tick down. So instead of having 60 seconds, this is going to be reduced to like let's say 55 or like even 53 to 55 seconds cooldown. That's like let's say general 7 seconds shave of each Stormkeeper multiplied by let's say 20, 20 Stormkeeper per dungeon, even like 30. It's like extra 3 to 4 storm keepers per dungeon, which is obviously huge DPS increase by just doing nothing. So always precast the storm keeper, even if you have to wait like 5 seconds before you attack. It's actually a huge DPS increase. So, precast storm keeper. I, I usually lust before engaging a big pack. If you don't have lust, that's also fine. You can skip that section. Uh, I usually precast uh, storm elemental as well. I never use my storm elemental ability before it, it gets empowered. We usually have to wait three to four seconds before the storm elemental gets empowered, and then you can use the actual ability called Eye of the Storm. Right. So I, I, I like to have at least oh one or two earthquakes before I use my blood of the enemy. So in this case, I, I had one, and then I cast another storm keeper so I can generate one more earthquake. So once I have two earthquakes, I will I will cast a blood of the enemy right now, and then once I cast this blood of the enemy, I'm gonna cast my storm elemental ability, and then again spam chain lightnings and earthquakes. I ignore all the Ignatius potential procs when I play with some elemental because they're not really worth to use in AoE situations. I know that many of you have asked me in the past, never ever use Ignatius potential procs, that's lava burst procs, when you play storm elemental and when you have some elemental available and you burst in a pack. That's simple. And I think earthquakes, period, nothing else. But watch this together. As you can see, my thing, my AoE goes from pretty much zero to hero in like five seconds. I'm actually flying already here, pretty much doing next exp expansion damage. Now, if you now now you might ask yourself, well, who are those people? I never heard about them. The Ladra and Demonchai. Well, let me just show you. Those people are actually one of the best people in the world. Now, Demonchai is currently the, the rank one DH in the world. That is my group, and Ladra is rank two rogue in the world. Uh, I have, have also played with them since season one, and uh, happened to become a rank one player in season two myself. I have also see here you go Demucha again another is here so both of them are very very experienced players they're good at their class if not the best of their class even see them in post season two they have played their classes and season three so see those people are more among the best of their class so they're not plebs not randoms so as you can see a comparison between a good shaman player and a good dh and rock player if you play your cooldowns correctly and manage your burst windows you can actually of, like a lot of high numbers and eventually you can actually out dps them if you are consist consistently performing good generally they would probably have higher damage than you but that should not discourage you to try your best and try to out dps them so that's pretty much how to aoe as a shaman uh in 8.2.5 that is going to help you in 8.3 this is going to be the ground base this is the, the same way that that we burst in 8.2 going to use it as 8.3 so if you learn it now you're going to you're going to help yourself in the future now again, if you see any weak hour that you like, any trinket weak hours, or like pretty much any UI things related, they're all available on my Discord, which is going to be in the description below. I will post it. Um, speaking about single target, it's very very simple. I'm going to just try to, to to find a quick quick video just to show you um, about my single target rotation. It's pretty much very simple, but again, some people might get confused. So I just want to show you really quick. So here's how I start usually. I pre-pot. Well, now hold on. Speaking about pre-pots, when do I use? When they, what pots do I use? So usually if I fight one or three targets, I use Unbridled Fury. I remember this Unbridled Fury, you can you can Google it. Or if I fight between four mobs, four mobs or more, I usually use Flat Intellect Potion. That's Superior Battle Potion of Intellect. I'm gonna put a stamp node right here somewhere so you can take a look at it. I never use Proximity Potion because I need to be nearly as a range. It's kind of awkward and I always, always skip it. So proximity potion never use. You use one brother fury between for one and three targets, and four and plus you use superior battle portion of intellect. That that portion of intellect. How do you burst this elemental shaman? Very simple. Precast stormkeeper. You have uh, trinket. You can precast the trinket. Prepot lava burst into flame shock. As you can see right here. 
lava burst into, into flame shock. Then I usually insta, insta use my storm elemento. I'm gonna use blood of the enemy right here. I'm gonna cast double storm keeper. One, two, and then I'm gonna just cast lightning bolts and earth shocks. That's it. Lightning bolts, as you can see, and earth shocks. Look at this. When I have my storm elemento up, I ignore my lava burst procs. Whenever my storm elemento is over, then I can start using my lava burst here and there. And that's pretty much it. Very simple, straightforward, don't get confused by random websites showing elsewise or discords. That's the guide coming from a rank 1 player in the world. I'm on currently, so take my word. If you have any, any more questions, please feel free to DM me, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, my Discord is always available. I'm streaming daily on Twitch, Twitch TV slash X. Ask me any questions you want. Uh, please leave a like, subscribe, and open the notifications. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, that's it for now. If anything changes, I will let you know. Peace, love, guys.